Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today we're going to look at timelines. Timelines is a relatively new feature in Notion, but one that can really take certain types of databases to the next level, give you a visual overview that lets you interpret and understand what's going on much better than any other view we have previously had. When Notion adds a new database view, that's a really significant feature upgrade. So we definitely wanna take full advantage of it. And in this video, I'm going to show you the primary way that I apply timeline views in pillars, pipelines, and vaults, and that's specifically for projects. There are a few other areas I do it as well, but this is the big one where you get the most value out of the timelines feature. So that's what we'll focus on here. This video nicely follows the last two. The second to last one was about the annual review, all about laying out your game plan for the upcoming year. So now in the timeline view, we can really chunk it out and space it out and see how we're going to implement over the first quarter, over the first six months, and over the year. And the previous video was about habits and routines. So that's a parallel track in how to get things done. Between projects and habits and routines, you can completely change your life. So if you can execute on those two parallel tracks, you've got the game figured out. And I'm going to add this functionality to the projects database that's embedded in my action zone template. The action zone is one of the premium templates I have included in my free template pack, which you can get anytime you subscribe to my free newsletter. And it's going to be pre-built for you to use out of the box when you duplicate my action zone template, which is the whole daily focus implementation dashboard to the whole pillars, pipelines, and vault system. Just to avoid any confusion, the action zone is one dashboard within the larger pillars, pipelines, and vault system. There is also the master PPV template that's a part of a paid course and that's going to be available to anyone who wants to go through the more intensive training program of the Notion PPV course, which is going to relaunch again in a couple months. Link for that is below as well. So with that, let's dive in. We're starting in the command center and jumping straight into the alignment zone, which is where I typically do my project planning. I typically do my project execution and task management in the action zone. That's for daily focus. But in the alignment zone, I line up longer term planning, including project planning. So this should be familiar to any of you who have been following the series here on how to implement the pillars, pipelines, and vaults notion system. If this is new to you, there's a video entirely on this dashboard here called the alignment zone. Just look for the alignment zone video previously in this series. And there's also a video on each and every one of these toggles within the alignment zone. But we're jumping down to where we execute our projects. And we've got in this one toggle view, two different views of the same database. Both of these are the projects database, but we've got our board view by future, next up, on hold and active. And this is how we line up what we're working on. This is filtered only by private is not checked. I do private because a lot of my projects are private and I do these public broadcasts. So I hide a lot of them. My list is actually a lot bigger than this. This is just a sample that I'm sharing since it's a public broadcast but your list will ultimately be much larger of the future next up and potentially on holds. We're hiding the someday maybes and the completeds. You don't have to filter for the status because only the statuses that we are making visible in the board appear here. The rest are all stacked over here. And here is where we line up what's active and what's not by just sliding them left and right and move it there. But what we're looking at today is the timeline view. Now, previously I had a gallery view here. And that was nice. Basically, this is filtered just for active projects and I have a nice graphical card for each of my active projects, which made it nice to jump into it. But timeline view gives us a lot more actionable and useful information. So I've actually shifted to this top view being the timeline view. And this is what it looks like completed. I'll show you how we built it in just a moment. But I'm lining these up manually. So I have my work projects queued up here in one sloping sequence. I have my personal ones here in another sloping sequence. I keep track of work and personal, each in their own sequential lineup. And look how great this is. It shows the start point and the anticipated end point so I can really plan when I'm going to have more time opening up in the future. And then what you do is as you add more future and next ups, you can actually queue them up here. I wouldn't go too far out because things slide, things change. You don't wanna be constantly managing these. But I could see you doing the second or even third iteration after these start finishing, as you see time opening up, that's where you can queue up future projects and then you'll have a pretty good roadmap of how you're gonna get from where you are now to where you wanna be at the end of this quarter or in six months. This view right here is the quarter view, which I find is a great view. It lets me get a good perspective over the next several months. But we can of course change it to annual view, which is also pretty useful. And another little trick, just like with the wide tables that we're always scrolling, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, if you hold shift, you can scroll left and right with the scroll wheel just by holding shift and then letting go. And you can position this so you can see everything. And so you just queue up what you're gonna do. Take a look at the year view, the quarter view that we just saw, the monthly view, and now this one's way out. So we're gonna hold 
Of course, you can also hit today right here and it'll recenter today. But I find the monthly view can be a little tight the way I'm queuing up my projects. Because projects tend to be, you know, two to six weeks. Today I'll get you right back here. You can go to bi-weekly, weekly, the kind of medium term planning I'm doing with projects. That's a little too tight. So I'll stick with quarterly. Now, critically, you can click on those three dots and choose what the timeline is being generated off of. It's being generated off of a date property. You have to have at least one date property. If you have multiple ones, you can pick which date property to use. And I've chosen my timeline dates. I also have a review date, but I'm ma managing the timeline off the timeline dates. You need to have a start and finish. So if we open one of these up, you'll see the timeline dates has a beginning and an end. The way you create that is you just click this end date toggle on the bottom, and then you choose the start date and the end date, it'll generate the range of dates that that project is active from the beginning and end date. The beauty of this is once you set it up there, you can very easily change it. You just drag this and the end date's changing. So we just changed the end date. And now that of course adjusts here. Put that back here. You drag the whole thing forward. It'll position that anywhere you want it. If you command Z, if you control Z of course, it'll go back to where it was. So once you have it set up, you're com constantly adjusting and tweaking just in the timeline view itself by dragging and dropping the endpoints of these various project listings. Super convenient, super fast to adjust. And again, these you can drag up and down and reposition them in any way you want, or you can apply a sort just like just as usual and have it sort automatically. I like having them in a sloping pattern so I can see what's up most immediately or what I've been working on the longest and need to start wrapping up. Plus it just seems easiest to follow along a pattern like this, but I also like having them clustered between work and personal, so I do it manually. I don't have so many projects that doing it manually is a burden, but if you had a lot of them, then you'd wanna have an automated approach. Of course, you can also apply filters to this the same way you apply filters to any database, and you could have a filtered view just for work and just for personal, and then toggle between them or stack them one above the other. That would be another way to approach it. And then you could automate them within each separate cluster. In fact, I'm tempted to actually split these into two different views, each filtered for work and one filtered for personal, since there's already a selector for business personal, and then you have both, and then you could automate the sorting. So this is nice because it's a little bit more compact, and I can see these down here more easily with this being more compact. I usually, usually look at this in a much smaller view like this, so I can see everything, but I'm enlarging the text so that you can see it more clearly during this demonstration. So let me show you how to create this from scratch. All you have to do is click timeline, click add a view, choose the new timeline view, title it, and create it. It's gonna give you a blank one. Now you need to first go and set the timeline by, choose timeline dates, and now it's gonna lay it all out for you. By default, it gave us a month view. We're gonna jump out to a wider view so we can see it more clearly. Now, when you first do that, each of these is probably is not going to have the timeline view beginning and end date set properly because you're unlikely to have been managing that already. So go ahead and add a timeline dates property. So just add a property and make it a date property. Jump in, add an end date, and then for each one, add a start and end date. Just throw something in quick. Don't worry about it. Once you get to this view, you can adjust the end dates and drag them and resort them in any way you want. Now it did jumble them. It didn't come in with my nice custom arrangement. So we could add a sort. We could sort by the timeline date to stack them all properly that way. And if you just wanted to have a work one, then you could add a filter. Type is business. And then you got the business stack. I like having all of mine here, so we'll stack them all. If you want to manually reorganize any of them, you can restack them. They'll ask you if you want to remove sorting, go ahead and remove it if you don't want it. And then, and then you can stack them any way you want. And then you have it. That's how fast it is to apply this. Then finally, in properties, you can choose what you want to make visible. I've made it so my percentage task completed is visible. You could hide that if you don't want it. You could put the task progress bar in, and then it'll show the progress bar. But I want to keep it compact. The ones that go off the edge of the time range turn to a darker gray, and that's not quite as nice to me. So I try to keep it compact and just use the percentage in this instance. 
Now jumping into the action zone, we have a projects toggle right here. Today toggle is our normal today toggle for our action items for today and our daily tracking, our habit tracking, which has all been covered in previous videos. If you're interested in that, we have videos on the action zone and on the action items database and on daily tracking. And we have a projects toggle to view our projects, which have historically been graphical cards to pop into the active projects very easily. But I've now switched that to have my default view be the timeline view. So now as I'm working on my action items today, I can pop open my projects. I can see what's going on. I can see what's falling behind. I can see what we need to wrap up here pretty quickly. I get a really good sense of where I am with everything with my percentage indicator of percent of tasks completed. When it gets to be a high number like 90, it may be nearing completion or that may mean I need to add some new tasks to map out what needs to be done to get to the finish line. So if I pop into one of these, I can manage all the tasks here that are relevant for this project. But this new timeline view gives me a great overview of where I am in everything, which I never got with the gallery view. The gallery view looked nice, it was organized, gave me a nice progress bar indicator, but I get so much more information and just as clean, if not a cleaner view of what's happening across my projects with this timeline view. So I'm really happy about the timeline view being embedded here in the action zone, just like it is in the alignment zone. I've also been experimenting with how to apply timeline view with the due dates in the action zone. And there are a lot of interesting ways to look at this. I go into this in more detail in the Notion Performance Systems course that I teach at yearzero.io. And then the third place I've been using the timeline view is in the content creation pipeline. Again, I go into more detail on that in my Notion PPV course. So there you go, timeline view in action in the Pillars, Pipelines, and Vault system. It's a great new feature. I'm very excited that Notion released this and I'll be using it quite a bit as you see. It's available in the template already if you wanna re-download my action zone template. But if you have your own system underway, just add a timeline view, organize it the way you want as I demonstrated and put it to good use. It takes very little time to set this up. I have another time-based planning tool that I'm going to introduce into one of our critical PPV dashboards coming up in the next video or two. That'll take this idea of project and task planning a little bit further, then you'll be all queued up to implement at a higher level. Then we'll get more into some of the more psychological aspects of improving yourself and improving your ability to execute through mindset and identity sculpting. I've been promising that for a long time, it's coming. The reason I've been delaying is because I've got a lot of follow up with it. So once I get started, I wanna have regular videos following up and going deeper and deeper into that stuff because there's a lot I plan to cover in that area over the next year. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us at my new online community for a broader conversation. That's at yearzero.io and hit like if you found this video valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter and the new timeline view has now been added to the Action Zone Projects database in that template pack. The template and newsletter link is below in the show notes. Thanks for watching, lots more to come.